Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and the media with international news can best be described as hypocrisy. Today we see the U.S. lie machine at work. Tehran and Tegucigalpa, A Tale of Two Capitals, July 9th, 2009, by Barry Gray, and posted at the World Socialist website. In Tehran, demonstrations called by the defeated U.S.-backed presidential candidate are given non-stop wall-to-wall coverage by the American media. Yeah, I watched it. The charges of former Prime Minister Mir Hossein Mosavi of a stolen election and a coup d'etat are embraced uncritically and reported as fact by the New York Times, the Washington Post, and other authoritative newspapers without any independent investigation or substantiation. And I kept wondering, yeah, where's the proof? And they just kept saying, they're screaming about it, it must be so. A media propaganda campaign ensues aimed at isolating and destabilizing the ruling faction in Iran, headed by Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei and President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. The protests are dominated by better-off sections of the urban middle class. Hey, it looks like Venezuela! who largely voted for Mosavi and support his right-wing program of closer ties to American and European imperialism, yeah, yeah, bring back the Shah, and a rapid introduction of pro-market policies. I remember seeing a guy who said he had left Iran in 1979 giving an interview which meant that he was one of the Shah's torturers. The working class, seeing nothing to support in the faction of reformists headed by Mosavi and the billionaire former president Ali Akbar Hafsanjani, abstains from the protests. Now remember, the story of Iran is this. Iran in the 50s elected their own president or whatever. He wanted to do good for the country, share the wealth. So the CIA had a coup and put him out, installed the Shah of Iran with his torturers. And in 1979, the Iranian people rose up using religion as their banner and threw out the Shah with his torturers. They went to the United States for support and, you know, haven. And so they took the uh, hostages at the American embassy for a year and a half until Carter lost the election and Reagan came in. Now, remember, Bush was CIA director, the old Bush, during this time when Iran basically freed itself from American clutches. And then Bush became vice president under um, uh, Reagan. And together, once they get out, what do they do, the Americans? They finance their neighbors to attack them. So Bush got his buddy Saddam Hussein in Iraq to attack Iran, maybe kill the million Iranis. That's what they get for taking Americans hostage, right? And... Of course, later on, uh, Bush, the younger Bush, ended up whacking Saddam. How do they do that in a country with no death uh, penalty? And it's true, Saddam Hussein didn't have a death penalty. So how could Bush hang, Bush hang him in the Iraq? But back to Iran again. So here we have Iran being demonized consistently ever since they threw out the American dictator and his torturers. And of course, the people we see on TV saying we got this is illegal and the no democracy and we want these guys put out. These are the guys from 1979 who were working for the Shah before and are linked to the American CIA torturers again. Yeah, I'm a Canadian. I got to watch it all. So the media dispenses with any pretense of objectivity and proclaims the protest movement and its leaders the spearhead of a green revolution for democracy, bringing the Shah and his torturers again, democratically. Every act of repression by the Iranian regime is given headline coverage, and rumors of hundreds of deaths are reported as fact. The U.S. media focuses its wrath on particular on the regime's efforts to block internet and mobile phone communication. Hey, the Shah would have machine gun them all. And the Americans would have said nothing. Two weeks later, the U.S. trained and equipped military of Honduras breaks into the home of the elected president, bundles him off into a plane, and flies him out of the country at gunpoint. The basic crime of the deposed president, Manuel Zelaya, is aligning his government with Washington's nemesis in Latin America, Venezuela's Hugo Chavez, and Cuba's Fidel Castro, and carrying out modest popular reforms within Honduras such as raising the minimum wage. Well, don't forget, Honduras has also been ruled by American-backed dictatorships for, for all their history. Read about it. 
There can be no dispute that Honduras has undergone a coup, but the event is barely reported by the U.S. press and broadcast media. Neither are the arrests and deportations of ministers of Zelaya's government, the closures of local media, outlets sympathetic to the ousted president, the arrests of foreign journalists, and shutdown of U.S.-based outlets such as CNN, and the imposition of a de facto state of siege, including a dusk-to-dawn curfew and the mobilization of thousands of Honduran troops in every major city. Go see the movie, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised, about how the Americans took down Hugo Chavez for a couple of days, but then all the people came out and demanded him back, and they had to bring him back. You get to hear how the American puppets, first thing they do is cancel Parliament, cancel the courts, cancel all civil rights, and the guys on TV announcing this while the rich dudes are in the background all applauding. Two days later, they're all scared because they're surrounded by a million paisans who want Hugo back. The revolution will not be televised. Great movie. So, uh, uh, the coup regime, which is backed by the Honduran business elite, always, just like in Venezuela, the Congress, the courts, and the church, seeks to halt internet and cell phone communication, evoking no protest from the U.S. media, right? Oh, the Iran, ah, dictatorship. But in uh, Honduras, not a word. Need eh? I've been watching the American media do this all my life, so <laughs> I can see through it. It's funny that most people can't. Demonstrations in support of the coup, staged by the new regime, are dominated by the wealthy middle class of the capital, Tegucigalpa. In the teeth of state repression, the Honduran Teachers Union launches a 60,000-strong strike that closes the schools, and thousands demonstrate in Tegucigalpa. The demonstrations are dominated by trade unionists, workers, the unemployed, and the rural poor. This working-class resistance to the coup barely gets a mention in the U.S. media. Well, actually, I hadn't seen anything about it. This is the first I heard about it. Amazing eh, how the media can build up this story and shut that one down, which leads you completely astray. Leads one completely astray. On Sunday, July the 5th, troops barricading the airport at Tegucigalpa fire on unarmed demonstrators who have gathered to welcome Zelaya as he attempts to land a chartered plane and resume his office. A 19-year-old youth is shot and killed. Again, barely a mention in the U.S. news media. I didn't hear about it. One can only imagine how the U.S. media would have responded had Ahmadinejad arrested Mousavi and thrown him out of Iran. Or the howls of indignation that would have erupted had the Iranian president blockaded the airport to prevent him from returning. True, eh? Double standard all the time. The name of the international political game is, one word, hypocrisy. What's the most hypocritic thing you can imagine? And that's probably what's going on. I remember the day when Ronald Reagan was accusing the Sandinistas of drug running to raise funds for their war, and then the CIA got caught doing it. You know, so whatever's the most hypocritical thing it, that it could be is usually what it really is. CNN made great play of the efforts of the Iranian regime to censor the news and intimidate foreign journalists. It has said nothing about the shutdown of its own broadcasts by the Honduran coup government. On July 4th, CNN.com reported that it received a videotape showing Honduran troops shooting out the tires of buses, bringing anti-coup demonstrators to the Cuchigalpa from the countryside. This video has been given little, if any, airplay by the network. At least one person was killed and as many as 30 were injured. The Latin American press has widely published photos of the fatally wounded youth, Isis Obed Murillo, being dragged away by his fellow protesters. No such photos have appeared in the major U.S. newspapers or on television news channels. Murillo remains unnamed and unmourned in the American media. One need only compare this callous treatment to the media frenzy over the death on June 20th of Nida Aga Sultan in Tehran. The death of a 27-year-old student, who was reportedly a bystander at a pro musavi protest, occurred under murky circumstances. The government denied responsibility, but the media immediately declared her a martyr of the Green Revolution. Her picture was splashed across the front pages of the newspapers and broadcast by every channel. Nita was proclaimed the Joan of Arc of the Iranian opposition. Now, there's also the chance she was shot by someone else away from the demonstration because she wasn't at any demonstration. Think about that. You didn't hear about that, right? This tale of two cities provides a graphic illustration of the character and role of the American media. They're owned by big money, 
and they do what their bosses tell them to. Owned and controlled by corporate goliaths, it functions as an adjunct to the state and the propaganda machine in behalf of U.S. imperialist interests. Its class bias and that of the lavishly paid individuals who serve as top editors, senior reporters, and TV anchormen is underscored by the diametrically opposed responses to the protests in Tehran and Tegucigalpa. Well, just go read Noam Chomsky's books, and that's how it's always worked. You think this is new? Barry Gray. Well, maybe to the new generation who aren't aware of the CIA's dirty dealings in the back rooms, and it works like this all the time. Whoever they're demonizing are usually the good guys. Okay? I'm not blaming American people. They're stupid. They don't know what's going on. They're being fooled. I'm blaming the American administration and the gremlins who work for it, causing trouble around the world. 